The Lloyd Ray Farms Waste to Energy System represents an extraordinary collaboration to demonstrate how waste from swine farms can be turned into energy, reduce greenhouse gases, and improve waste management. The award-winning system represents a unique partnership between academic, private, and public sectors, including Duke University, Duke Energy, Google, and of course, the Lloyd Ray Farms. Seed funding was provided by the USDA's Natural Resource Conservation Service and the North Carolina Division of Soil and Water's Lagoon Conversion Program. The system was designed by Kavanaugh and Associates. This is a demonstration project that partners hope will usher in continued innovation in hog farming, energy production, and the reduction of greenhouse gases. To give a better background of why such an innovative system is needed, we need to discuss the environmental and economic impacts of traditional swine farming. In traditional swine farming, all waste from the pigs flows directly into a lagoon from which it is applied to spray fields. Ammonia and methane are emitted to the air from the open lagoons while water levels are kept in check by applying the wastewater to nearby spray fields. The high nutrient content of the wastewater requires that farmers grow hays and grasses that are capable of taking up a lot of nutrients. This protects waterways, but the crops are not highly valuable. Other environmental issues associated with the traditional system are the potential to introduce excess nutrients to spray fields that can affect the quality of the surrounding waterways, which in turn can affect the entire waterway ecosystem. Lagoons and spray fields also create a great deal of odor. So, the innovative system can have both environmental and economic benefits as compared to traditional swine farming. The innovative system cleans the wastewater considerably so that once it moves into the farm's existing lagoon, the water contains a substantially lower concentration of nutrients and other constituents. This system also substantially reduces ammonia and methane emissions into the air. Odors are greatly reduced as a result of the innovative system, as is the pathogen and heavy metal content of the wastewater. And now, when applied to crops, the water has a much lower nutrient content, which not only allows for farmers to grow cash crops like corn and soybeans, but better ensures that nutrient loading to waterways is greatly reduced or greatly eliminated. Another important role that innovative waste management systems play is that they make it possible for farmers to expand their operations because they meet North Carolina's stringent environmental performance standards which are required for farms in North Carolina to expand. And because the system uses the methane in the captured biogas to make electricity, the project generates Renewable Energy Certificates, RECs, in fulfillment of North Carolina's Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Portfolio Standard, and greenhouse gas emission reductions that partners can use to meet their carbon neutrality commitments. What follows is a step-by-step -step overview of the system with lots of scientific detail. Let's begin the virtual tour. Here is a schematic of Lloyd Ray Farms. The innovative system can be split into two subsystems. First, the environmental system. The waste moves as follows. The waste flows from the swine houses to the anaerobic digester and then to the aeration basin for treatment before being reused to flush waste out of the swine houses or for irrigation. The second system is the electricity and greenhouse gas reduction system. The renewable energy and carbon offset generation starts when the methane biogas created in the digester is treated by the conditioning skid and then either combusted in the microturbine or burned by the flare, all to create RECs for Duke Energy and carbon offsets. The electricity produced by the microturbine is used on the farm. First, we'll cover the environmental system in detail before we dive into the electricity and greenhouse gas reduction side of things. Let's jump into the process with what fuels the entire system, the swine houses and the waste from the pigs. There are a total of 8,600 swine on the farm at any given time, housed in nine barns. They stay on the farm for about 18 weeks. The hogs produce, on average, 368,000 gallons of waste per week. On weekdays, the waste is flushed out of the houses and into the anaerobic digester. In the in-ground digester, the organic waste is broken down through the process of anaerobic digestion. 
An anaerobic environment is one without oxygen. This is important because without oxygen available, the waste decomposes and produces the biogas. The digester is lined and covered with material made out of high density polyethylene, as you can see in the photo. You may be asking how the digester benefits the environment. Well, the decomposition that happens in the digester helps address many of the environmental issues associated with hog waste in four different ways. First, it reduces total nitrogen. The nitrogen is ultimately reduced via denitrification, which is the reduction of nitrate to nitrogen gas under anaerobic conditions. The aeration basin is tasked with nitrification, which converts ammonia produced in the anaerobic digester to nitrate and nitrite. The flushing of the swine barns also helps to control nitrogen and ammonia. The second environmental benefit is the containment of all gases. This significantly reduces the release of atmospheric ammonia, pathogens, and odors. The combustion through the microturbine also reduces methane that would otherwise be released into the atmosphere. Third, heavy metals are reduced by precipitating out of the wastewater column and falling to the bottom of the digester. The metals contained in the sludge that collects at the bottom of the digester are periodically collected and disposed of as opposed to being applied to spray fields. Finally, the digestion itself lowers harmful pathogens. After undergoing anaerobic digestion, research has shown that the waste contains fewer pathogens. So, by the time the wastewater travels to the aeration basin, the next step, the concentrations of pollutants are already lower. Now that we've covered the benefits of the digester, we'll move to the aeration basin where the overflow from the digester travels. The aeration basin works to help further break down the waste and pollutants by introducing oxygen. This picture shows the large fan-like fixture that introduces oxygen into the wastewater column. The reduction of ammonia, a harmful pollutant both atmospherically and terrestrially, is arguably the most important environmental benefit of the entire innovative waste management system. The ammonia captured in the digester follows the liquid to the aeration basin for treatment. The introduction of oxygen in the aeration basin causes the oxidation of ammonia to nitrate through nitrification. The uncovered basin forces oxygen through the wastewater and runs intermittently throughout the day. This is when nitrification occurs. Nitrification happens in two steps. The first is ammonia oxidation, where oxygen is combined with ammonia, and the results are nitrite, hydrogen, and water. The second step is nitrite oxidation, where the nitrite is converted into nitrate by combining with oxygen. Once aeration is halted, oxygen is reduced through biological processes, ultimately removing all oxygen and creating an environment similar to the digester. Without oxygen, nitrate converts to nitrogen gas through denitrification. Denitrification occurs when the nitrate combines with hydrogen and additional electrons, producing the neutral gaseous form of nitrogen and water. You can see the chemical equation here. The nitrogen gas resulting from denitrification already comprises over 70% of our atmosphere. The inert nitrogen is released into the air, either here in the basin or through the flushing of the barns. This picture will give you a better idea of what the aeration basin looks like in action. Once processed in the aeration basin, the mostly clean water is used to flush the swine houses, which greatly improves air quality in the barns. Excess water flows by gravity to the lagoon, which now stores clean water that can eventually be used to irrigate cash crops. That's the end of the environmental system, so now we'll move to the greenhouse gas and electricity system. The biogas production begins in the digester. How exactly is the waste broken down to produce biogas? Well, the bacteria found in the waste decompose the waste into organic acids that are then further broken down into bicarbonate, carbon dioxide, and methane. A simplified organic chemical equation showing the breakdown is seen here. The biogas is comprised of approximately 60% methane, 40% carbon dioxide, and 1,000 to 1,500 parts per million hydrogen sulfide. 
the relative humidity of the gas is close to 100%. After biogas production really gets started, the cover is filled as seen in this picture. The cover inflates considerably as more and more biogas is generated. The primary reason to capture the biogas is to create RECs and carbon offsets. The biogas flows from the cover into the gas conditioning skin, where it is dewatered and compressed, think air conditioning, and then combusted in a microturbine. A flare is used for excess gas. The combustion of methane biogas counts as renewable energy certificates because the fuel is from the waste. The wrecks created by the burning of the methane are in compliance with North Carolina's Renewable Energy Portfolio Standard Mandate. The electricity generated is enough to power the environmental system and five of the nine spine houses, and this amounts to over $1,000 in savings per month. Another aspect of the biogas process is the generation of carbon offsets. By burning the methane, you're releasing carbon dioxide instead. Now this may sound wrong, but methane is a greenhouse gas that is around 21 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. To draw better context, all the methane created in traditional hog farming isn't captured and is released directly into the atmosphere. The project team verifies offset reduction using the Climate Action Reserve's Livestock Methane Protocol. So to give a brief summary of the entire system, First, the waste flows from the swine houses to the anaerobic digester that's covered to contain all the gases. Two things happen here. The biogas is trapped by the cover and the cleaning of the waste begins. The waste flows to the aeration basin where oxygen is introduced to help further break down the pollutant ammonia. This water is reused to flush the barns and any extra liquid flows to the storage pond where it's ultimately used for irrigation on the farm. The waste system reduces nutrient loading into waterways and helps farmers grow cash crops. It also allows them to expand operations. Moving back to the digester where the biogas is trapped, we follow it as it flows to the gas conditioning skid where it's chilled, dehumidified, and compressed. It's combusted in the microturbine, which yields Rex for Duke Energy. The electricity stays on the farm to run the system in some of the barns. The combustion of the gas by the microturbine and flare reduces the release of methane, generating carbon offsets for Google and Duke University. With that summary, it's the end of the tour. Make sure you check out the website for a video on Google's visit, as well as more information on each of the partners. Thanks for coming along. We hope it's been helpful and informative. Please visit us online at sustainability.duke.edu slash carbon underscore offsets.